All right, welcome to Smokey Reacts. I'm your boy Jonas, and on this one, we are here for me, I guess, to uh, let you into a little bit more of like my own like personal world to kind of give like an understanding of like where I pick up some of the like nuanced fashion stuff I like understand or like the information I may not understand, like where I go for like greater clarification because it's a world that I don't inhabit. I just kind of watch, and then you guys know I make my critiques and videos, but. One of the channels that I watch all the time is a student named Bliss Foster. Shout out to you, Bliss. I don't know if you see this, but if you do, shout out to you. You do an amazing job. I love the format. But he has one that I thought would be interesting for me to watch and do a reaction to. This would be uh, Decoding the Runway, Evaluating the Success of Fashion Shows. And I was like, ah, that'd be a pretty good one. And yeah, kind of show you guys where I kind of look at fashion and then like the stuff I watch like that is like fashion YouTube. But uh, yeah, thank you for joining me. Uh, anybody that watches this, thank you. This is just another side quest uh, reaction video. I don't know how many more we'll do of Bliss's stuff, but I will probably add more some fashion stuff in. That said, though, uh, please hit the like, subscribe, Patreon's in the description, and let's get into this. Big bliss. Always Fashion on the floor. is a pretty unique art form in that the artists have to produce work at an incredible pace, showing at least at least twice a year. Most designers show four times a year. Men's, women's, spring, summer, and then fall, winter. There are plenty of designers that show eight times per year if you count the more market-driven collections like pre-fall and cruise and stuff. Karl Lagerfeld oversaw the release of over 300 collections in his life. Ray Kawakubo of Comme des Garçons oeuvre expands over four Fashion Week calendared brands, each showing twice a year, some of which have been doing so since 1981. I don't know the official number of shows that she's done in her life, but it's a metric f ton. Real, real quick, I'm making this episode because I actually need your help deciding about something. I really cannot make my mind up. So after you are done watching the video, please comment below so you can help me know how to feel. How should we judge the merit of runway shows? How should we determine if these are good or bad? Because like if you... If the shit ever makes it to regular people or becomes shit motherfuckers actually wear or use later on not just for like i get the pieces that are like ah like this i'm trying to make a statement like that's obviously not gonna make it be that's not like why well, I'm, I'm not saying don't make those type of outfits as well I'm, I'm just saying that like overall like next 15 years because we didn't have zippers on the shoulders before bro now we got zippers on the shoulder because of bro whoever that is just as an example like i feel like that shows to me at least the merit because then I'm like, oh, I seen this in Paris like three years ago. Ah, uh, niggas is finally now wearing that. That's the the merit of a fashion show to me at least. And hyped are good or bad because like if you've been into fashion for any length of time, you've gotten hyped for a new show by a designer that you love. You watch it and then you're disappointed. Whether they tried something Facts. new and failed or they just stayed in the same place and it got stale, it, it is an inevitability that at some point with the sheer quantity of shows that are coming out all the time that you're gonna watch something by someone you like and it's not gonna be good. So as far as determining the quality of a runway show, I feel like most of us just have a I'll know it when I see it type of idea about this, but I, I feel like we need some kind of rubric as to how we determine quality. It doesn't have to be like an exact rule book set of rules for everything but we need some kind of general guideline that allows us to have some kind of consistency when we're determining the how fast does corporate fashion try and steal your runway fashion idea and put it on a, a new t-shirt or a pair of pants that's how we can start judging these because that's what i mean it's just like how fast does it go from the runway to the like the actual consumers because when it's on the runway it's that's it's like it's yeah it's elitism it's like classism in that. Like you don't got enough money to buy this unless you were in a certain rarefied air. So now that you're there, like how fast can these ideas be disseminated into the population, at least on a fashion level? Quality of not a designer's work overall, but of a specific runway show. I'm recording this while Fashion Week is going on, and I very badly want to go look at the new Junior Watanabe show, but I can't yet until I finish this. So Junior we're gonna, Watanabe. We're this. I've heard that the new Junior goes very fucking hard. We're kind of we're sort of in a Junior Watanabe golden era. the The last show that he put out, the last women's show, was the best show that I've ever seen in my life, and I, I think this next one's supposed to be pretty good as well. Dang, this is the first Paris Fashion Week that I have not attended in a long time. I'm gonna make you a deal. 
If you join the Patreon, then I will give you the benefits of joining the Patreon. I, I like this offer because I need the same thing. We'll give you all of the benefits of the tier of the Patreon that you join. For real though, if you get value out of what we do here, out of thinking publicly about runway shows and fashion as art, I ask that you please support with the amount that reflects the benefit that you get from it. Let's do go support the homie though. Cause I don't even he just popped up on my YouTube one day. And you know me, I just I randomly I'll just watch anything. But this was like fashion related. And then like he sat on the floor and it was like he was having a conversation with me. I was like, Oh, this is a nice format, bro. And you actually know your shit and you don't make like it's not all pretentious just for like just to act all stuffy. He knows his shit. He likes what he likes. He tells you what he knows. Then he gets the fuck out the way. You form your own opinion. I'm like, I like this. This is good. Shift gears. The world has changed a lot since the internet and among other things, the internet has introduced this environment of quantity over quality. Usually we say the opposite of that, but what I am saying is quantity, more of something over quality, better of something. Virgil Abloh, who I like the work of and respect a great deal, has this video where he is interviewing or he's talking or he's like giving guidance to a young designer. And he asks that designer, what else are you working on besides this? Hypeland, them niggas doing a rug game crazy right now if you don't know who hypeland is they got uh like the anime rugs and stuff they really kind of popularized that on the internet that boy right there he, he did a heavy pivot he's got shirts now but they're not that style i don't know about currently like when the last two seasons of stuff they've done but like that's kind of what made hypeland kind of pop was them anime rugs and then they do have like other merch collection and the designers like I'm just working on this collection. And Virgil said something really interesting. He was like, if you're not working on 10 things at once, then you are undermining the impact that this one project can have. Because those 10 things will all hold each other up higher than the one thing can hold itself up on its own. Essentially, he was arguing for quantity over quality. And everybody, consumers and designers, they all love talking about this idea of quality over quantity. I'm more about quality and stuff, but that, that doesn't seem to be what the market responds to. It's, it's a bummer but every fashion designer does partake in some way in this process of quantity over quality. Not my fave, you may say, not my fave, hoping that I won't provide evidence, even if a designer only shows twice per year, spring, summer, and fall, winter, and even if they have a fairly small collection, we'll say 35 looks per season, 70 looks per year, a small collection, we'll say. See, like this, this fisherman jacket, this style of fisherman jacket has been recontextualized a little bit to just be a little smaller, but those are very popular now in current fashion for just people on the street. Like, that's the merit of, like, a good design and stuff like that, at least to me. Like, I can now, I see this not only here, but I see that there where people can actually get it. Say 35 looks per season, 70 looks per year. And even if we say that half of each collection are... People are dressing like this right now. Like, that is the current. Just dresses, so very few garments. And then, I mean, 20 of those looks are trousers, a top, and an outerwear of some kind, and the remaining 15 looks will be as minimal as possible, just pants and a shirt. And even if we say that the models are barefoot, no accessories, that is still a total of 125 garments that need to be made by that brand per year. Hold on to that number because we're gonna come back to it in a second. Most designers are not just designers. In fact, almost none are. They have many other responsibilities. On average, designers are lucky if 20% of their time is actually designing. If they're a young brand, it will definitely be less than 10% of their time. So let's average that out and say 15% of this hypothetical designer's time is spent designing. Assuming that they work six days a week and take two weeks off per year, that comes out to 45 days per year for designing. Okay, so if you work a full nine hours per day, that is about three hours per garment that you get on average to design. And I mean, of course, no designer on earth actually works like that. I've seen how dozens and dozens of designers work and all of them are radically different and none of them are like that. Most of them that I've seen, their day looks like this. 
Pretend this is a sewing machine and that this is the one day a month where I've allotted for me to have time at the sewing machine actually doing the work of making clothes. Hey, I'm your new employee that is late again. Um, if you don't micromanage me, I will do absolutely nothing today. Hey boss, there's a note from our factory that says sorry and also instead of sending us shoes, they sent us gravel like crushed up rocks. And I'm a third character who is off camera and I'm here to tell you that there's a rat infestation in your studio. But yeah, I mean, just breaking down the needs of the business just, just as far as the World clothes are down. concerned, just the garment design is concerned. Three hours per garment, that's all you have. That kind of helps us to understand that there's just a lot of gaps that need to be filled. And as a result of that, there's going to be a lot of filler. That That is a bummer. For the record, I do not think that like that's cool and awesome and we should all be cool with that. The whole reason that we're here, I mean, if, if clothes were just a commodity that you use to like keep you warm, then who gives a shit? Just go buy a shirt from a store and wear the shirt. But because we are all here and we take interest in this as an art form and a hobby for a lot of us, um, I... It, there, there needs to be something more, but we should understand that designers are under this enormous, insane pressure to do a lot of things with almost no time. I hate to approach this by talking about the way that people react online, but that's... I wonder with this time aspect, it's to compare it to music. We've, we have songs that are maybe oh, far, it could be up to like 10 years if you've been doing it long enough that you're just now getting around to being able to properly finish for it to come out. Or let's look at uh, Gautier's Used to Know. Boy, had, had that record like five to seven years before he found the right girl to sing it. Had multiple iterations of it. So when I compare this now to fashion, are the fashion people, aren't they sketching outside, like even on their just offhanded chance? Because like when I'm walking down the street, I come up with lines. Like when I'm eating, when I'm doing just random things, I can say something out loud. Somebody say something in a movie, like conversation. Like, oh, that's a bar cut. Like, I'm taking that that's good or like oh yeah it's a good idea like write that down before you forget it like so that's extra time outside of all the other times I create so when it comes to the fashion stuff are they doing extra designs outside the normal time they would create for fashion because if so I feel like then the pressure is immense still but it's it's lightened a little bit because you may have created a couple of pieces on the outside that you can add to your current collection to lighten the load if you do create in that way though, but I have no idea. Seems to be the most <laughs> relevant sticking point for this video. I'm conflicted here. Because on the one hand, I think that the internet overall is far too reactionary. And fashion people especially so. Overall, I do love that about us. We're a group of flagrantly extra weirdos. We should never stop doing that. But we often treat very special designers as disposable. And I, I guess from the audience's perspective, I. Technically, they are disposable. If you're just watching from your phone, there will always be some new young designer to take anyone's place. So, yeah. Well, I like to Watching from your phone, style. there will always... Yeah. I'm not mad. The shorts. Shorts is nice. Always be some new young designer to take anyone's place. So, yeah, get rid of them. But I do think that's I a shame. Like I think though. that oftentimes we're a little too reactionary, a little too quick to throw away designers that are really special. But then on the other hand, there's a lot of leniency that's given to designers that are considered to be classic. Kind of like designers that are almost tenured and can do no wrong. And in my opinion, what this results in is a lot of stores that are filled with repeat product that is incredibly boring and a lot of very uh, specific compliments of runway shows like, oh my gosh, I just loved the shirt in look 15. When of course anybody with eyes can see that the entire show was as boring and phoned in and forgettable as the last 15 shows that that designer did. But oh, it's classic, so we just give them a pass forever. As a group, we should stop this. As a group of fashion fans, we seem to be at once too forgiving and too reactionary. So what is the deal here? Just start calling bullshit all the time. And then at that point, can't nobody come with no bullshit. So if somebody comes with some overly reactionary shit, well, we know that's bullshit. You don't do that. And if somebody comes with some, hey, well, we just giving folks pats on the back because they OGs and they're not really actually contributing with any merit anymore, we don't do that any we don't do that anymore either because then we will have an ecosystem where everybody knows it doesn't matter where you at you're the og you're the new nigga the, the boy you got to come with it and if you always know that you have to come with it and nobody's going to give you any passes because you you got a, a name 
Well, that's a, that's a healthy ecosystem, at least in my estimation, because at that point, I mean, everybody's going hard. I think the deal is just that this is really complicated. And I, I tend to think best in questions, so I'm going to ask some questions here with the hope that maybe you all can offer me some wisdom about how to approach determining the quality of specific runway shows. Is a designer only as good as their last collection? And hey, look, when I'm showing... No, but if you keep giving multiple duds, that's when we have to start questioning you. But your last thing might have been really good, but your next thing is, is trash. Or the last thing was trash, but the next thing, next two, three, four, five things, amazing. You never know, but you got to be coming with it. As long as you're doing that, I think you'll stay on the right, like you'll stay on the right path you runway shows while we're talking about this i'm not saying that these designers are part of this problem or whatever i'm just showing you cool runway footage okay so is a designer only as good as their last collection i think most fashion fans would say no to this question the complicated part is that companies these designers work for do feel that they are only as good as their last collection solely because of sales figures i mean in case anyone was confused if the collection doesn't sell the company is fucked even at the established houses owned by LVMH or Caring, even with the added security of a holding company, a bad LVMH or Take my shit back to the factory. Like, I I had almost no issue with it when it's a long sleeve, but then I noticed my boy got a short sleeve on the other side, and I'm like, this just looks, just looks stupid, short sleeve. No, no. Shoes is terrible. Bag, I can see that bag being quite popular, though. Uh -uh. Caring, even with the added security of a holding company, a bad collection makes the folks in charge well, start to right. ask, is this the beginning of the end for this one? The so is a designer clean. only the as good as their last collection? I think most of us would say no, but the boss says yes. Is a designer only as good as the best idea they've ever had? When you design yeah, something that's iconic, close. something that's so effective at what it does that there's no denying its quality, something like the tabby boot, the baguette, the Burberry trend. Yo, if my bird had this hat on, if she was walking like this, a young lady right here, like I'm just the baddest thing out, I would love it. This hat looks so cute. It's like, yeah, I'm bad. Does that secure a designer's legacy indefinitely? For example, Giorgio Armani has enjoyed decades of being a global household name. Like, it does not matter if you're a cricket fan in Bangladesh, a Mormon in Ohio, or a Turkish oceanographer in the Arctic. You have absolutely heard of Giorgio Armani. Okay, but you and me, we are fashion fans. When was the last time that you personally watched a Giorgio Armani show? For me, it was when I was researching this Stop episode playing. four months ago. Prior to that, I had never watched it one time. Decades ago, Armani had a great idea, but his work has evolved very little after that great idea. What do we do with Those that? Those shoes are cute. I mean, it's easy to say, ah, just throw them out. But something about... Oh, see, hey, shorty back with the hat again. I like this hat. It's a good hat that feels like it does diminish the once in a generation change that whose fucking fashion show is this again this is hey I, i'd watch this one that blue and white thing is hard he brought to the fashion industry like he shook this shit up so hard that people who hate fashion know about jacket. his work how do we celebrate that though. achievement without offering empty praise to something that might not always be worthy of praise here in the present. Just to qualify, I have not seen the new Giorgio Armani show. It might be absolutely incredible with some wonderful ideas that are also shaking things up really hard. I just haven't looked at it yet. So I'm not necessarily saying it's bad, but you get the idea, hopefully. Should a designer only be judged based on the merits of their final product? I mean, I... I if all you've ever put out is shit, and then you put out one more product, and then don't make nothing else, and we discuss you in fashion, yes. If... You are somebody that has put out multiple collections of various degrees of success. Then we will look at the totality of your career. I think what I'm trying to say is we're just going to look at what you've done in your career. It doesn't matter about what your last thing did, but it was the whole thing. Did you end on shit? Sure. We should be able to say that. But, hey, that man had a run. He had 18 of them before that 19. That's, I think we should be able to say that. I've been collecting fashion for over 11 years, very slowly. I have product by a wide variety of brands. I always favor getting something by a brand that I've never gotten before over repeat purchases from the same brand. And I, 
I've sampled from a lot of different brands and I can tell you that almost every brand in the world, every single one misses very consistently with their products. You are lucky if you see the entire collection from a single designer. You are lucky if you really, really love 20% of it. And usually the rest of it is either just okay or flat out bad. That's no one's fault. It's either just not gonna be for you or it's going to be filler because they're just is a lot of filler. My only real progress with these questions is to take the art and look at it on its own terms. If I'm expecting a T.S. Eliot poem when I read a haiku and I hate the haiku, then we don't have a bad haiku, I have an expectation problem. Different That's... designers work in different ways and the good ones are not all good. At... I like the cut of, I, I, I like the collar and the hem. The, the, our sleeves are just different at the same thing. I mean, if you were to judge a kid's super runway the same way that we judge a collection by the row, we're all gonna have a super bad time. And like, even two brands that aren't polar opposites. If you try to judge a Walter Van Burendonck collection the same way that we judge a Jean-Paul Gaultier collection, we would be making a mistake there. I don't know what the whole answer to these questions I've posed here are, which again, I need to hear from you all on that. But I think that we do have to ask the art what are your goals? And then as the viewer, we then get to follow that question up. Remember the first question is art. What are your goals? And then we follow that up with, did they accomplish those goals well? And how difficult were those goals to begin with? That's as far as I've gotten is those three questions for determining the quality of a single runway. And just add to that how fast do we think these ideas that this art is trying to express will be incorporated by corporate fashion interests and then just the normal person that just is just wearing clothes that has no idea that they they're wearing whatever well they they probably don't a lot of people don't know like a lot of the fashion choices they have are informed by higher levels of fashion that have just trickled down but like that process how fast does that happen after a fashion show i feel, I feel like or the potential of this, how fast we think that would happen after a fashion show, I think would be a really good metric for that list. Show in isolation. Because if a designer comes to us with a new collection saying, hey guys, remember that thing that I did 20 years ago? Well, guess what? I made it in green. Then we would say, yes, they met their goal completely and perfectly, but the goal was very, 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 very easy. And if a designer's goal is, I want to propose a new grammar for androgyny. If you are non-binary, I am offering you this as your lifelong uniform. Then we, the viewers, would say, wow, that is an unbelievably challenging goal. They may not have met their own goal 100%, but the goal was so lofty that we should consider giving them points just for trying. And then the dialogue begins on whether you or you with others deciding if that collection was in fact good and more importantly, why it was good or not good. Again, I don't fully know the answer here. I feel like my job primarily is to ask provoking questions and to tell people what I see. So at this point I have laid out what I've seen and I've asked a lot of questions and I'm hoping that you all can help me reach a conclusion with this. I know that when YouTubers do this and when writers do it, when anybody does this, it always seems kind of like this is sort of a, a, a way to easily tie things up. I have completely changed my mind about videos like this after reading comments. I really do have a great deal of respect for you all and what you think and how you all process information. So I'm really hoping to get some guidance and wisdom here. Tell me what you think. Peace. Go follow that, man. That nigga cult. I fuck with Bliss. But, yeah, I feel like, especially for, like, an entire runway show, my one addition to the list, I feel like, does kind of cheapen it. But having those other questions coupled with that one, I feel like really rounds out what a fashion show is supposed to be like how high was the idea how hard was that idea to achieve how well was that idea then achieved and then how well do we think that these ideas given time will become considered to be passe to where we are in fashion at the highest levels but become normal to the lowest levels of fashion that i think would be a really good criteria to look at uh, runway shows with because at that point you're really dissecting all the larger elements and then you can have a, a a pretty standard rubric to work with from there but 
That said, though, this was fun. Shout out to Bliss. I always learn something. So, just really, calm down, bro. Like, you, you just like fashion. This, this shit harder than you just try to make it out to be when you're out here just doing your quick one-liners on people. So, hey, it's good to hear. Also good to see that there's more of a nuance to it than a lot of the stuff that I had thought when it comes to their creation processes but that's it for me thank you guys for joining me please hit that like subscribe patreon's in the description and i'll see you in the next one i'm out of here peace